40 hours into Dark Tide and it hasn't even come out. Look, I, I got this. I wasn't sent this. Amazing. I, I bought this. What's up, Internet? I'm Dan Casey, and this is Secret Obsession, the show where we talk to cool people about the things that they are low-key obsessed with or secretly nerdy about. Now, today we're joined by one of my favorite people, one of my favorite actors. He starred in everything from Midnight Mass to The Haunting of Blind Manor to Harley Quinn and beyond. Please welcome Rahul Kohli. Hey, Dan. How you doing? I'm great, man. I'm stoked to have you here. Your, your obsession, it's not exactly a secret, but for the sake of the bit, mm. uh, what would you say is your secret obsession? Oh, okay. The thing that I never talk about or post yeah, about. Yeah, that you're revealing um, for the first time to the world. Absolutely. This is a Nerdist exclusive. Uh, yes. Is that I uh, paint miniatures. Like miniature oh my God. War gaming pieces. I'm I'm uh, someone who also has that, uh, that same obsession, but I'm curious for you, what was the origin of this obsession? Where did you start? What, especially with something like 40K? Yeah, I, I'm not one of those like day one guys. I... Uh, it's actually a very new Warhammer is extremely new to me as is as is miniature painting but where it kind of originated from was um was from making model kits so I it's kind of a long-winded story but I'll try and condense it so when I was auditioning for 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 work I was kind of needed all the time but also had a lot of free time it's kind of a weird place to be in and I remember thinking to myself as a 20 year old like you need a hobby you need something to fill those days where you don't have an audition and i i picked up a model kit i think it was like battlestar galactica or something like that and before i was about to sort of like put it together and paint you know with, as i used to do as a kid which would have been just to dip the brush straight into like some enamel paint and just like, slosh it on there um i was like well this is the age of youtube man like well how do you how do you really do this and that started this deep dive of watching like these content creators show you how they make model kits for special effects and, and what the studio versions are. So I got heavily obsessed into painting Star Wars miniature kits and I wanted to mimic the ILM weathering and doing all of that stuff. And once I booked my first real big kind of job, it took me away. Airbrush compressors and model kits is just not something that you can practically use. So it kind of died. It kind of died. At, uh, it was just something I just stopped doing. And it wasn't until a mutual friend of my, uh, mine and Sam Witt was, I think she misunderstood and thought we both paint Star Wars miniatures, the Star Wars Legion, and put us in touch. And through that conversation with Sam, I bought a pack of Star Wars Legion and he gave me a, a YouTuber called Sarastero who basically has a entire playlist of showing you how to paint Star Wars Legion. And that's how that started. So I did it during the haunting. I think when we wrapped Haunting a Blind Manor, I painted up some stormtroopers and I, I can't even look at them now because the how fast I've changed in as a painter. Like it looks gloopy. It looks the, the paint looks thick. It just annoys me. It annoy. I'm, I'm thinking of stripping it, but I don't want to keep it because obviously you should keep your first. Your first. No, of course. It. Yeah. yeah, it's nice to have that time capsule as well. Just think of them as like the degraded clone troopers compared to your newer entries. Oh sure. Oh, um, they're the they're the stormtroopers that were underwater on the Star yeah. Destroyer for uh, <laughs> just, 30, 40 years. Yeah, yeah. Though. Just just got excavated with the space Titanic. Yeah. I that, I love to hear that though. That like misunderstanding led to this sort of cool hobby and this ex yeah. exploration of that and you know especially with all these content creators out there i remember back in the day in middle school uh, i got into mordheim which was like the sort of kill team variant for yeah. warhammer classic age of sigmar it's now and it was you, i painted a bunch of skaven and i was like i i heard of dry brushing but i didn't understand it but now right. you can just go online and learn anything you want to what's been one of the most useful skills uh, that you picked up through um you know, working, like watching these content creators or what is, what's something you've learned that's come in handy with model building? I think, I mean, the mod, the model stuff was fairly, I felt straightforward. I mean, I learned how to use an airbrush and, an, and a compressor and that in itself is, you know, it's, it's, you know, thinning your paints and working with the correct PSI, depending on what you're doing. And, and also like, there are a few things that you, you lose through YouTube. So you have to kind of trust people, which is like, you know, when a good paint uh, ratio to your thinner is that it should look like 2% milk. And I, I feel there are certain things they tell you that you have to sit with someone and they have to show it to you. And you can yeah. get that reference once, but on, on YouTube, that makes it a bit difficult. So there's a few things that 
I still haven't completely nailed it. I feel like the second someone shows me what a paint looks like when you glaze it in person, I'm sure I'll be fine. But uh, the most important thing was, honestly, it was thinning your paints, which is which has been applicable for almost everything. I mean, it's not just for the miniature building uh, uh, hobby. I think most people thin paints. You have to thin your paints and um, you just get better results. So once I kind of got the knack of working with paint and, and adding different amounts of water so I could do like a wash or I could, um, you know, your paint needs to be thicker for an edge highlight. That's something that only clicked three months ago was, oh, I don't, I should, I, I, I want to create a nice edge highlight on my Space Marine armor. Okay, cool. Well, then I shouldn't even really be putting much thinner on it because I want it as sort of thick as possible. So as I skim it just ever so slightly, it, it stays where it is. It's a, it's, anyway, that working with, with, with paint consistency has probably been the most kind of helpful thing I've learned. It's definitely something that makes you pause and consider things even like, how, oh, how does light hit an object in yeah. a way that you might not otherwise? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, a lot of the guys say that you, they, they like I, I know so many like world-class painters now, and I'm obsessed with them and I'm, I subscribe to their Patreon, but a lot of the guys, will hit it with their phone light and then take a second camera and take a reference picture and uh. then have that on their phone and go, okay, that's my light source. That's what I'm working with. Those are my volumes, which I've not done yet. Cause I got, well, talking about Warhammer, I only got into Warhammer this year at the beginning of the year, but I was very aware of it being a Brit living in the UK. There was a games workshop every couple of blocks. You just felt like, and as a kid, I would see them but I was way too intimidated to kind of get involved. It just looked, to, I'm, and, I'm, and I'm stupid. Like I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm not a very bright person. You know, I would, I would go into these shops as a kid, and I'd see measuring tapes and maths, and I was just like, hell no, because this looked way too complicated. It just always put me off. But I always appreciated like seeing terrain and, and mm -hmm. seeing painted up armies. Um, and then uh, my girlfriend was a Warhammer fan and as a kid she never got to play she always kind of felt a bit intimidated too but for different reasons so she just read Blood Angels that's how she what she used to do when she was a kid so this year she asked me for a Blood Angel and I didn't know what that was so that's where the deep dive started and where are we now December this was January mm -hmm. and she still hasn't got a Blood Angel Hey, there's still time. Now I'm put, an ultra put on top of the put on top I've, of the Christmas tree. <laughs> no, I've left that behind. I was like, yeah, yeah. Blood Angels, great. <laughs> sure. Now sure. I'm just fully into my own stuff. I got my my sons are Horace, and I got my my Ultramarines. I just bought Amazing. my Cadia Stands box set. I've got the new um, Votan. I'm going. I've gone hardcore into this. I I want those Votan real bad. I'm working on some white scars myself. But yeah, uh, you you started with uh, Ultramarines, correct? Is that yeah? And oh, oh, because like box art. It was the box art. Yeah. It's like a simple. It's as classic. That, really. Yeah, it's classic. It it does. There's a reason I think they use them as the box art as well. It does pop. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it in a in the real world, I probably would go for a much more muted kind of almost Master Chief Doom Slayer type look. But I feel like we do that so often. That's always the go to when we're playing video games is those kind of military colors. So to to, to kind of collect something and paint something in blue with gold, you know, and or yellow, depending on how retro you go. Like it's it's kind of freeing and cool to play in that in that arena because everything else is so dark and and muggy. Yeah. yeah. It's also it's also a nice contrast with sort of the uh the grim darkness of the setting itself. Yeah. Because it's yeah. all just like it is very rip and tear like Doom, but uh you know it's nice to have these pops of color even Absolutely. The, yeah, even yeah. the even the alien horrors are just like all sorts of shades of like sickly pink and purple and things like that. Yeah, and then you've got like I think I'm drawn to, is it, um, I'm still learning my, my factions, but um, is it uh, Iron Fists? Uh, I believe it's, I what believe it's called? Imperial Fist. Imperial, excuse me. Yes. I think, yeah, Imperial Fist. Like even like, when I got the Horace Heresy box set and I was looking at, you know, I think the the, the, the color scheme they go from the box is the Sons of Horace are obviously green. And then you've got the, uh, the Imperial Fist or whatever. That yellow still looks badass. Mm -hmm. Like it's bright yellow, but I even I was concerned. I was like, damn, and they got that that kind of logo. The, uh, I don't know. Like, I'm not a very colorful person. I, and like I said, whenever I 
work on projects or create my own characters i usually stay so far away from color but warhammer's just like opened my eyes to power. it's also because i'm colorblind so i've always avoided color as a kid um and now i'm sort of like colorblind be damned i i work with the colors i'm 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 screwed with which is browns reds and greens and i i try and attack them head on and it's actually helped my it's not as easy for me but i would say there's been a massive improvement to how i identify and separate reds browns and greens now that i'm mucking around with them a lot more than paying attention to them Wow, that that's really cool to hear about. It's not something I would have considered, but I guess it would sort of the more you're sitting spending time sitting mm -hmm. with it and sort of able to distinguish even better just because you're working with these shades so frequently. That's very yeah, cool. Yeah, because I would just avoid it. And then yeah. that was it. Like <laughs> I just would never bother with I mean, look, if you you know, people always do that when you tell them you're colorblind, they'll point to something and go, What's that? It's like, look, I know my Liverpool shirt is red. Yes. And, I, and if it was next to a Christmas tree, I'd I'd be able to see the difference in them. But it's when you're mixing, it's when it gets into the, you know, it's when you're trying to identify something that's between a red and a brown or a brown mm -hmm. and a green. That's where my spectrum just, it just falls apart and I cannot, I cannot distinguish. Um, and like, that's why I'm excited to do my Cadia Stands box set because those are colors that are gonna muck with, you know, they're gonna mess with me. And I'm gonna, we'll see. I mean, I've literally painted someone's, I helped someone move house and I painted their walls. They left me alone for an hour, came back, and I had painted the wrong color because oh, no. I just couldn't couldn't tell. Like that, yeah. it, it's, it can be pretty serious. But I'm like I said, I'm confronting. I'm confronting it. Hey, that's also that's also on them for not being specific about what paint they wanted. Yeah. So yeah. Although apparently I should have known that because I was continuing their work. I should have known. Yeah. That what I was continuing with didn't match the color that was almost like a centimeter away from the one that they had used. I don't know, sometimes it looks a little bit, paint looks different when it's wet versus when it's dry. That's exactly, I'm give you the benefit yeah. of the doubt here. Thank you, Dan, appreciate yeah, it. Of yeah, of course. Is there anyone else, uh, anything else in your sort of growing collection? Is there like oh a white God. whale that you're after or something that you'd really like to add to the collection? Yeah, almost everything. So <laughs> yeah, it's, I'm, a, it's a dangerous I'm... hobby. <laughs> so this year in particular, I've been filming non-stop. I think I've had like I had two weeks off between projects and and uh, my filming has been away from home. So I've been working on small pieces out in Vancouver and just a little bit because I, I don't want to like overdo it and buy all this stuff. So my plan is, and I, this has literally been agreed with with my manager and agent, like I don't want to work. I'm taking time off. I'm tired. All I want to do is paint. I basically haven't done my ultramarine army. So I want to get that up. I think I've I'm set up for like a two two and a half thousand point armor. It's pretty big. I have still have my Legion. So there's also outside of Warhammer. I've still got Star Wars Legion to finish off. But yeah, in Warhammer, I guess what's the White Whale? I I, I want to. The thing is, I'm really good at vehicles because that's what mm -hmm. I started with, and I haven't touched a Warhammer vehicle. And I know the approach would be different than I want to do it all airbrush, which is what I would do. But for in order for it to fit in that heavy metal style that Warhammer's known for, I, I'll need to edge highlight by hand to get mm -hmm. that, you know, kind of iconic look. So I really want to do the new, there's a there's a new tank that they're releasing for Cadia and it looks freaking awesome. And it begins with R and the name has, uh, has escaped. Is it the Rogel Dorn? Rogel Dorn, yeah. There and I, I have, they haven't said when it's coming, but it looks incredible. So I think as soon as that comes, that's going to be my project. I just want to paint that thing up. It looks absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, this this does look sick. I remember back in the day, I always really wanted to play 40K, but, at, you know, I was a kid. I didn't have that level mm -hmm. of disposable income you need for it. And just yeah. I was always drawn to the Imperial Guard because of just the, the awesome vehicles they had in their arsenal. Yeah. Um, but hopefully this will come out soon. I'm reading... Um, Hell's Reach right now, and so they just keep talking about the Lehman Rust, the Rogel Dorn, oh. stuff like that, and it's just nice to see them in model form to know, get a sense of what they're describing in the book. Sure. What? Wait. What are you reading? Hell. Hell's Reach. Hell's Reach. I just bought Cadia Stands, um, and I'm, I'm I've only done like a chapter, but I, I don't read, which is amazing to hear from an actor. But um, but I don't know. I'm, I mean, I I I have too many hobbies, like. <laughs> The Warhammer obsession is just, I don't know where it's come from. It, 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 Like I said, it was just a small sort of thing. And it came from not knowing what a Blood Angel was to then being like, oh, these some of these figures are dope. I want to I wanna get this to 
this is part of my British heritage. <laughs> and like, <laughs> like now I've like doubled down. I've put like 40 hours into Dark Tide and it hasn't even come out. Look, I, I got this. I wasn't sent this. Amazing. I, I bought this. Like, <laughs> uh, Games Workshop don't send me anything. I'm about to probably say something controversial here, but for me, there are some really big, famous IPs that f right now I'm tired of, and they feel watered down. Uh, um, they feel like they've been made in a factory and they're just churned out, and they just feel a bit kind of vanilla. I, I love having some kind of lore or world to invest in, and obviously, you know, I, I mean, it's no secret, I was a huge Star Wars fan. I am a huge Star Wars fan, but for me right now, I don't, I, I'm not as excited. I, I used to love the, you know, the EU books and all of that stuff and playing every single game and learning and seeing, and, and, and something's happened. Maybe I've just grown out of it or it's just, I'm just tired of it. I, I, I needed to replace it. And for some reason, Warhammer feels like the edgy teenage cousin of Star Wars. And everything's about genocide. No one's a good guy. The humans are like awful. It's it's like you're either with us or we just obliterate your whole planet. Like, and I'm. It just feels so gr more grown up and and I and I and unpredictable that it's kind of pulled me in. And I'm like, oh, I've just found something else that. Uh, and and on top of that, the Warhammer community is like you'll spot one or two at work, and it's like this. Like it's like the Freemasons or the Illuminati. Like. <laughs> Like if you, they can spot you, and I kind of yeah. like that. It's big, but it's not, it's not that big. Um, mm -hmm. And now I'm learning to play as well. The actual that's game. awesome. So you've got you've had the chance to play so far. Yeah, there was a um, there's this wonderful group of uh, content creators. Uh, they're called Play on Table or Play on Tabletop. I think um, I sent out a tweet while I was in Van, and I was just like, screw it is anyone out here willing to teach me how yeah. to play i want to get a game in and i thought maybe someone might be like hey we have a, a game going on at saturday in our shop uh i suspected that i may end up at someone's house with some some random people <laughs> and i was willing to just buy snacks and watch people play yeah. but what, what kind of happened was uh, we all got in touch with each other and i went and visited them at their studios and they walked me through like all day i was there from the start at my own pace here's how you play because you know it's it is a lot yeah uh, and we took it down they stripped it down to like a 500 point army and um and by the end of it like i couldn't add up my dice like if it was a three <laughs> and a four i was like eight and then when that started happening they were like okay we're, we're done for tonight and i think we only did a turn and um, a turn and a half if that um, but I've, I've been with them since again, watching them and learning and it's starting, starting to digest it. That's awesome though. It's nice that, uh, you found those folks and they're able to sort of like patience can be in short supply sometimes when you yeah. go to certain hobby shops. Thankfully, most that I've been to, everyone's just stoked that you're there and want to know yeah. how to play, but there's a definite learning curve with uh, actually playing 40 K it's one that took me a while to overcome. It's like, even back in the day, I started collecting magic cards because I liked the artwork and I was like, oh yeah, you can, uh, you can play with these. Oh, pretty yeah. cool. Yeah. I just um, started magic. Oh yeah. Well, welcome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just nuking your wallet from orbit. That's what, that's what's happening. I think a lot, like when I share these hobbies, everyone's like, oh, it's, he's spending his, his, uh, his acting money. That's what that is. Cause it's like, I did, I ended up doing three things since like having some kind of disposable income publicly and it was like i started buying fancy watches i've always wanted that and then warhammer and magic and i'm not joking at this point i i've only been warhammering since january and i'm i'm like deep. i've spent a lot of money for someone who doesn't know what they're doing oh it I, adds up it adds up quick anytime yeah. you go to the hobby yeah. shop you're like oh oh no ring it up anyway <laughs> I don't know what's happening. I'm like this though. This is the thing is you also don't be surprised if this video ages poorly and I never talk about Warhammer ever again. Hey, I've been it's like this all since good. I was a kid. I will it's get all good. and then drop it. Uh, I get obsessed with the learning. I get obsessed with not understanding it like like I have with 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 the painting and I feel that already within the space of, you know, 6 months, 7 months my painting has evolved, has got pretty damn good already without much of a background in it. And that's the kind of kid I've always been where I need to research something, learn it when I feel like I've maxed out and I've hit my ceiling. I don't, I've not been around long enough to love it. So I'm out and 
and I've somehow lucked out where that makes me good at my job. So I find a character, I'm like, what's pathology? Let me research how to do autopsies, which I did. <laughs> like, learn it. Okay, I understand it. And now I can have a conversation with the pathologist. And then once I'd maxed out and it was now useless to me and it worked for the role, I never spoke about pathology ever again. It's just like, and, and, and it's, so I kind of used that kind of thing my parents would be really upset about like we just bought you roller skates and and you're done with them already and it's like yeah i've managed to use that <laughs> to my strength as an actor so if i yeah so by before i burn out we've already finished production and i'm like i never want to talk about it ever again yeah well i look forward to seeing your roller derby project but that is uh <laughs> that is that is very cool though sort of channeling that because it is a collector impulse at a certain point that mm -hmm. wanting mm -hmm. you're collecting knowledge I, that's a very useful skill to have and i think a very healthy one because even if you wind up never talking about pathology or roller skating ever again yeah. it's in there somewhere it's in the yeah, back yeah. of your brain roiling and, around and it's great for so like socially like I went, you know, if during my during COVID, I think we all got invested in something, right? And mine was Gundam. I, I ended up watching uh, all all the original stuff, learning about it, knowing my models, building them. Uh, I started painting them, airbrushing them, and I made some new friends through that and co connections through that. And uh, now I never talk about it. And then, like, they're like, oh, he's done, is it? Yeah, I'm done. I'm finished. And I still have a stack of like yeah. car models that I need to do. And, and I'm sure I'll get around to it. But yeah, I don't know. It just broadens yeah. the, the horizons a bit. And now that's the same with Warhammer. But that's the fun of it. And I'm and I think I'm experiencing that with Warhammer, which is like, you know, I literally walked in and I was like, so what's an age of Sigma and 40K? What's that? So what the hell does that mean? What's 30K? and and trying to now find my place and, and kind of mm -hmm. understanding and, and also because of I'm guessing Games Workshop did it for copyright reasons you know I I only just think like what's it Astartes the um what's the Adeptus Astartes mm -hmm. the Space Marines right yeah just say Space Marines so learning that that like it's almost like I had to learn an entire like this Latin language of like oh, yeah. or the Astrata Militarum what like it it the Adeptus Mechanicus, like that, that wound me up so much having to learn all of that. And it's still, yeah, it really does feel like I, I need like Duolingo or something for this. For oh, this absolutely. Stuff. They would, they would do well to add in a whole, um, just sort of like <laughs> phrases of the Imperium on their app. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think they also just named stuff, uh, that sounds, uh, even more impressive when you say it with a British accent. Oh. Yeah, just maybe. Ro rolls off the tongue. Abdectus, is it Abdectus Mechanicus? Admittedly, I don't know it that well. And when I started painting Ultramarines, I didn't realize I had threw up gang signs, basically, <laughs> yeah. for something I didn't know. So the tweets and the comments I'd get, they like, honestly, they really gave me a chuckle because I, I was rooting for something I didn't know what I was rooting mm -hmm. for and getting for it so i was like what that what is this like every time i post something people are either shouting about heresy or heretics <laughs> and these jokes and and like if i take say anything about cadia and then they get they make fun of cadia and 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 it falling but the guard did and all of this stuff like there's a there's this mean culture reference within it that i didn't get that i'm only starting to get and now like anytime someone sends me or calls me a heretic or shouts heresy at me. It just gives me, it makes me so happy for some strange reason. I find it so entertaining. I guess I can talk about it. It's not a secret. Markiplier, we had a conversation at a party and I had um, an Ultramarine sh shirt on, just a tiny little Ultramarines logo. And he was like, oh, I, I, I love Warhammer. I was like, oh, you play? He's like, nope. I was like, oh, you paint? No, like, no. Nope. What do you do? Only reads. Oh, wow. Only exclusively doesn't want wow. to touch the paint doesn't care about you know the video game none of it he is i read the books i love the books and that's it that's his entry point and that's what he ad adores and then i know other people who are strict on the games and have played all of them but have no interest in them painting the space i mean i think that's so interesting to me that it's this pizza and some people are happy with just like taking a topping and not it can see and, and cool i'm trying to eat the whole freaking pie and I think I'm and I'm bloating up now. My most watched YouTube channel is uh, Lutin09. They're all 
hour long law, which is Warhammer law, 40k. Oh, law. that's awesome. Yeah, and it's he's got more followers, subscribers than the official Warhammer channel. And all he does <laughs> is, is for an hour break down the bolt gun or you know, the four parts of just the Emperor. Mm -hmm. And I've been downloading those and listening to them on the plane like three four hours learning about the you know the imperium of man and and he's done one recently on dark tide so if you like okay is there law behind dark tide there's an hour long video where he breaks down the law of all the classes and everything you need to know and that that's been single-handedly one of the most important reference points for me even what you're saying about markiplier i love that there's so many different access points and mm -hmm. like you said people just get stoked when they recognize it that like yeah, yeah. language yeah. Um, even, yeah, even just something like a like an Ultramarines logo. It's nice how that can just spark that conversation. And then, you know, this leads you down the path to researching all the lore and things like that, because it is very cool lore. And it has a lot of similarities with other big fandoms like Dune, mm -hmm. Star Wars, all these things that people love. It's just a different flavor of it. So it's very Absolutely. cool. Absolutely. Well, I mean, that's what put us kind of in touch again. I mean, we knew each other anyway, but I know you you saw some of the yeah, yeah. Hammer stuff and you're like, oh, that's my thing. That it's just, It has a way of doing that, especially when you meet a fellow fan in the wild, which is always just very cool, especially when someone is as diehard or matches your level of fandom. Sure. That was very cool. Yeah, which, I'm, which I can't do. But I think people are still happy to have me as a guest, uh, as a newbie, I think. And I'm honest about it. I don't try to hide it. So I think that empowers other people to be like, oh, we got you. Let me teach you. Let me tell oh, you. Yeah. Yeah. No, nothing better than sharing something that you're obsessed with than other people, which is yeah. sort of the impetus behind this show in general. Well, Rahul, thank you so much, man. I really appreciate you taking the time uh, talking about model building, Warhammer, all that fun stuff. I'm curious, is there anything you can share about what's coming down the pipeline? What are you gonna, what are you gonna sit down and paint first? Who? So work, work, work. Um, this year, we uh, Mike Flanagan's next big thing is the Fall of the House of Usher, which is an Edgar Allan Poe adaptation. It's one of my favorites, um, and I've been I've seen a bit of it, and it's it's real good. Um, that's in the pipe, so that that's all done. That's in post right now, and I'm just wrapping up another show here called Career Opportunities and Murder and Mayhem, Murder Mystery. On a on a on a boat, um, but my passion now, which is my which is painting, I think I'm going to. Um, you know what? I someone gave me a, a combat patrol box, and right now I'm studying batch painting because I know how to do a spend mm -hmm. forty hours on one figure. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know how to batch paint, and I have an airbrush, and because I'll be home, I'll be able to use my compressor, and I'm I'm I think I might gift. Uh, my girlfriend the entire combat patrol painted as blood angels because I feel bad so that's going to be my next mission I'm going to batch paint all the blood angels and give her a, uh, I think it's a what's in the combat patrol a thousand point army in there I think I think something like that something yeah. like that yeah I'm going to gift that to her all painted up because when she was a kid she kind of got shunned and wasn't allowed to, to play in that world so um, I feel like it's a nice redemption arc so that would be the next thing well, that, that sounds like a, a worthy endeavor for your first uh, thing you're going to sit down and paint. I wish you the best of luck with that. And thank you again for joining us, man. I Thanks, really appreciate Dan. it. Thanks for having me, man. Of course. And in the meantime, folks, tell us, what's your secret obsession? Let us know in the comments below. And for the latest and greatest in the world of pop culture, make sure you stay tuned to Nerdist.com. Nerdist.com.